the Eastern Bantus. The Ameru. Here you go. Thank you. Uh, are you ready for the next group? Of course. Might as well finish the Bantus, right? And keep pattern with the Eastern, so let's go with the Amudu. Oh, great memory. Now, do you remember the origins? Of course. They came from the mythical origin of Mboa, which is believed to be along the coast, since the Kiswahili word is Poa. They moved west along the river Tana to settle where they are today. Nice job. Now, their social organization is similar in structure, but a few small differences. Like... First, there were six main clans. Igembe, Tigania, Taraka, Chuka, among others. The families that made up these clans lived in a village, Ntura, and each had a farm. Something interesting to note is that the father had a whole house for himself, the Garu, separate from the family. And did they praise the same god? They did praise the same god, and he was called Murungu, who they believed lived in the sky. This aspect made it that the sun was highly important to their religion. There wasn't really a priest role, as the clan leader was the talker to God. They did perform rituals such as burying the dead gods to get rid of floods or locusts or any other epidemics. What about the roles of the kids growing up? Did they have an age set system too? Um, it was more focused on actually the age. What I mean is that when a boy turned seven, he joined the Kamichu which practiced their skill of locating hidden objects. At 10 years, he joined Kigumi, where they learned order, duty, and manners. Then at 15 years, he was a part of Gaturi, and this developed responsibility and respect. Wow, it seems that they kept learning throughout their whole lives. What about women? Um, the females were taught domestic roles from their mothers at an early age. Upon turning 25, for both males and females, circumcision was carried out. And I'm guessing there were leaders to carry out the rituals. Correct. They had more people in certain roles, such as justice and lawmakers, and not just one elder council. Were they patriarchal? Yes. The father solved all problems within the family. If he could not, it went to the clan chief, who was called Mugwe. If Mugwe wasn't able to solve the problem, it would go to a group of elders called Kiyama. The Kiyama worked with clan fighters, Ntaka, to ensure that justice was carried out in the area. Meru legislation, if you will. If I will what? If you will, listen. Be quiet now. The Meru had a pretty advanced sense of legislation or governing laws and lawmakers. Their main body was the Njuri Cheke. It would compose of members from each clan's Kiyama. Kiyama is... The elders. Yes. I was worried you had already forgotten. Now, along with the elected elders, there also came a leader of the fighters from the Ntaka group known as Ramare. Since you said this was the main body, I'm guessing they came up with the laws and how the clan should move forward? Yeah. There were other parts branching off from this main body, such as the Agambi, or in a way, the Justice Department, if you like. They set up a system like today where certain crimes would have certain punishment. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. You've been hanging out with the Westerners too long with all these sayings, young man. Now, 
The most important troll was almost like the king of swords, the Raiboni. He came from God and advised on all matters in military, justice, and the historian of the people's history. How was he a historian? Like he knew all the oral traditions? Mm -hmm. What is really interesting to note is that the Meru government had a kind of political party system like many governments do today. They have a jubilee and a court party? Um, that is the modern day Kenyan parties, but theirs were the Kiruka and Ntiba. Now in days, parties are voted in, but for the Meru community, the groups alternated role every 14 years. The handover ceremony was known as the Ntwiko. So the ceremonies must have been a big deal and party. What did they eat and sacrifice? Well, because the Amerus had a group of very skilled hunters known as Alfi, they had a great source of meat and animal skin on hand to use and trade. Sheep and goats were regularly kept for sacrifice and rituals. So they did have livestock. I am guessing they used crops too? Good guess. And uh, they had similar crops and gender roles as the Agikuyu. While men cleared the land, women tilled it or dug it up. Remember the crops. Were they items such as bananas, sorghum, millet, and yams? Yes. They were also able to become great leather makers with all the animal skin they had hunted. They could make belts, shoes, and other clothes. They also practiced iron working for weapons, pot making, and basketry, and beekeeping as well. For honey. For honey, of course. Each house actually kept a couple of beehives. Speaking of honey, I'm hungry again. You want some popcorn? Yes, read my mind. Okay.